What's up, RTM family, RTM nation? We thank y'all for tuning in today for today's worship service. Now, y'all are in for a treat. As y'all already know, here at Villain Truth Ministries, we deliver fire from praise and worship to teaching and all that good stuff. But in order to, you know, facilitate a nice space for you, make sure you eliminate all distractions. You know, that means move tables, move chairs, put your rug down, whatever you need to do your thing during praise and worship. Make sure your space is ready and ready and conducive for you to do what you do. All right. So that's that's step number one. Step number two, go ahead and share this. Go ahead and start a watch party, because though we have to be distant from people, that don't mean you can't have people in your circle watching and viewing what you're doing. So share it. Let people know we here. We live. We ready for you. All right. So that's number two. And number three. Huh. Y'all already know after praise and worship, we got that teaching. Y'all already know we get good work here at Village Truth Ministry. So make sure you stay tuned in because the teaching is going to follow the worship. So let's get ready for some worship. All right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Anybody excited today about God's goodness? And also declares to rejoice in the Lord always. So today we're rejoicing. Today we're thankful. Today we're excited that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. We're leaning and depending on the joy that's on the inside of us. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, we invite you to stand with us. To give God praise, give Him glory, give Him honor that's due to Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, be free in your atmosphere, wherever you are. Be free to clap your hands, be free to dance. Oh.
He said, we have the rights to become the sons and daughters of Christ. So we are the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. And God's going to help us walk on high places. So trouble may come, but trouble don't have to overcome. This is a season of hearing. This is a season of waiting. This is a season of before I'm going to move on what I assume I know, before I move on what I learned last year, before I move on what they said, no, I need to wait and hear. No, I need to wait and hear. Even when I didn't have a way, God made a way in somebody I didn't see. So what I can learn about God is I don't have to know the plan, have the plan, or even put the plan together. He'll know right where I am when I need it, and he'll deliver on time. See, what I learned is God always delivers on time. So glad to be with you in this time. Glad to be together to hear a word from God. It's, you know, with all the commentary and all the messages uh, being sent um, during this season, it's important that we hear what God is saying. So I am grateful for this opportunity. I hope you are too. And I, you know, I challenge you to, um, you know, to steal yourself still yourself, uh, get comfortable, grab your Bible, 
pen, pad, or whatever you need. Um, you know, you can even, I mean, you're in the, you, you have the liberty of being in your own space, in your own house. So um, do whatever you need to do to set the atmosphere um, and be ready to hear from God. So with no further ado, I'm going to pray and then we'll share, um, you know, spend, a, spend a, a short time talking about what God wants our minds to be set on during this time. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit being here to teach your word with simplicity and understanding. We thank you, Father, for an abundance of peace and truth being revealed and accepted. And as a result, we all are strong and mighty warriors for the body of Christ. I want you to declare something with me right where you are. Say, God loves me. Jesus is for me. The Holy Spirit is in me to lead and guide me. I am a disciple and I'm a disciple maker. You know, um, in, there are many things that seem to be, you know, new in this season that we're, we're living in. Um, but the truth of the matter is, um, there are several things that only exist in some ways because of things that we neglected to deal with while we were in peace or while there wasn't as much turmoil and confusion going on. Um, and many of the things that people suffer or we're suffering is because of the things that we failed to do when we had the opportunity. Um, and that leaves a lot of people wondering, like, where do they go for refuge? Like, what is my source of safety? Where do I go for protection? Um, and even believers and church people are asking themselves the question, like, where do I turn in this time of challenge and, and difficulty? And it's really a question that um, we as believers shouldn't ask, shouldn't have to ask, because the truth of the matter is our help is in the same place it's always been. Our God is in the same place he's always been. And he's just as available today as he was last month, last year. This is a time where our opportunity to push in and focus on what's vital and what's important may be um, heightened by the situation and the circumstances, but God has always been available. God has always been available. So, you know, I want to talk to you from the message title, Who Can I Run To? Who Can I Run To? We're going to start in the 121st Psalm the 121st Psalm, and um, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. The scripture says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? And you know this scripture. You've heard it before. Um, you know, the other translations say, um, look to the hills. Look to the hills from which my help cometh, right? We've heard that scripture before. And um, and I'll just be honest, you know, when I've 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 heard it always stated like, that's where we're supposed to look for help. Like, look to the hills. Um, but in this case, the hills represent, you know, a um, place of authority, place of earthly authority, a high place. And the psalmist is actually asking a question. So it's more so it's stated like this. Can, look to the hills, like, does my help come from there? Does my help come from the hills? Does my help come from this high place? Does my help come from the mountains? Does my help come from the government authorities? Does my help come from the municipalities? Where does my help come from? Should I look to the hills? And then he answers his own question by saying, no, my help comes from the Lord. You know, for the people of God, our help comes from the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah stated, truly in vain do people look to the hills for help. Truly in vain do people look in these other sources or to these other sources for help because rest and salvation comes from the Lord. 
My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That just lets us know that he is reliable help. He is well able. Uh, he is uh, sufficient in himself. He's not lacking any provision. Provision. The God who made heaven and earth, that's my help. That's our help. That's our, our place of safety and refuge. Verse three says, he will not let you stumble he will not let you stumble. And I know this is a challenging passage of scripture because we wonder and we look over our lives and I can remember some times that it seems that I had stumbled, right? Some of you may be in situations where you feel like you've, you're stumbling right now. And this is the thing about it. This is what I want to point out here. In some cases, you know, we've got to redefine what it means to stumble. You know, it's the way that you've defined a stumble. You know, and, and I guess what's behind me even saying that is... Um, just a foundational or fundamental thought that I believe that we have to share as believers. You know, as believers, we have to believe that God's word is true. If God said it, it's absolutely true, right? God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he, he, he needs to repent about anything or take anything back, right? If God said it, it's true. So if God said that I won't stumble, then I have to believe that that is true. So even in such situations or circumstances where it seems that I have stumbled, or it seems like I am stumbling, then I need to redefine how I'm interpreting this situation. Here, I'll give you more. If I haven't allowed him to define the objective or the goal or the purpose, then it's easy for me to on my own decide the objective or the goal or the purpose. And if, if, if the purpose that I've decided for my life or the objective or the goal that I'm setting out to accomplish, if I've decided that, if I've defined it on my own, then it's quite possible that, that the goal that he has for my life, the objective that he set, the purpose that he set for me can be different from what I've set for myself. So what may appear to me to be a, a misstep what may appear to me to be um, a lack of progress may only appear to be that because of the way I've defined my own purpose or my own objectives or my own goal. If the thing that I'm pursuing is different from the thing that God is pursuing, then we won't see eye to eye on what progress is or what a setback is. When God says that he will, he will keep us so that we won't stumble, and if I'm experiencing something in my life where it seems like I have, then I need to go back and redefine or realign my definition with what God has said to me. If God says that he will uphold me, that I don't stumble, and, if I, and, and I'm in a situation where it seems that I have, then somewhere I've, I've, I've lost my alignment with, with God right? Because God's word is true. What he said is true, right? So if God says that he will not let me stumble, he promised that he won't let me stumbled, stumble. If I feel that I'm in a setback, if I feel that I've been set back, then I've got to get, then it's on me to press in and reevaluate my, my situation, not in my own understanding, not in my own knowledge, but in his, like, I got to press in to see what is God saying about this situation. I've got to press in to see how is God interpreting my circumstance. That's where I want to be. Because from his perspective, what I determine to be a setback may not be a setback at all. It may be a setup. It may be an, an advantage that I'm not able to see in my own understanding, but he knows more. He can see farther than what I can see. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes the purposes that we set out for in life, the, the, the value that we've followed, the value that's driving us may be different from the value that he's trying to establish in us. Sometimes the thing that we've decided to be important doesn't align with what he's decided to be important. I'll give you an example. I'll bring it right home to you. You know, it's the difference between a person pursuing good credit before pursuing good character. Ah, uh, shoot. 
You know, I mean, it's a person who, who has decided that they're going to do some things in order to get good credit. And there are things, there are things in the marketplace right now that you can do in order to improve your credit and bypass your character. But you've got to understand, where is God? What is he valuing? Do you think God is putting your good credit before your good character? Right? So sometimes there are setbacks or things that can happen to us. We determine that it's a setback, but it really fits into what God is valuing for us at the time. Understand this, that God is always valuing relationship. God is always valuing people and their development over any product or any um, end result that we may value. Sometimes we value, you know, our goal is to get the good house, where God's goal is to get us disciplined. You understand the difference? Sometimes our goal is to just get rid of the debt. And if we follow that track, if we chase that in our own understanding and in our own ability or in our own wisdom or the wisdom of somebody else, then we could, we could um, do things that lack integrity in order to get there, Right? But if I understand that God is developing me, God has a purpose and a plan for my life and my development, then his way is thorough. His way is, is, is true. He'll deal with the things that I may think of being difficult. He'll deal with it in ways that only, only he can. And that's the place that I really want to be, right? That's really all that matters. At the end of the day, all that matters is where I stand with God, right? His goal, his purpose for my life. So again, verse three says, he will not let you stumble. The one who catches or the one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself Himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. And I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. While I sleep, he watches over me. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your Life. And that's a good promise. I think that's something worth celebrating. Verse 8 says, The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and you go, both now and forever. It says, You know, what we've got to make our mind up about is that there is no substitute for the Lord. There's no substitute for the Lord. There's no other system. There's no person. There's no knowledge. There's no wisdom that can outdo him. There's no person. There's nothing that cares for me the way that my God cares for me, right? There's no, he, I mean, he watches over me without rest. He watches over me continually. He's promised to watch me all the days of my life. There's not another system. There's not another person, including myself, that can do better than caring for me than God can. Nothing takes the place of the Lord in my life. Nothing takes his place. So in my pursuit for safety, in my pursuit for security, in my pursuit for stability, I don't look anywhere else but to him. He knows my down-sitting, my uprising, my, my past, my present, my future, right? My whole life is in his hand. He covers me. He watches me. He knows what I need. So he's faithful and he's reliable. Psalms 11 from the Message Bible says it like this, and this scripture really speaks for itself. It doesn't need much commentary. And prayerfully, it just brings you back to um, a sound and secure place. I know that, um, you know, for, for some people, you know, with the, um, the current circumstances and the, the change and the news reports and, and um, all of the adjustments needing to be made, um, some people are being challenged in their stability. And you might feel like you're being tossed and knocked to and fro. And I believe this passage of scripture will bring you back center, will center you, give you stability, anchor you in the safety of our heavenly father. So Psalms 11, the 11th Psalm, um, starting at verse one in the message Bible, it says this, 
This is good stuff. It says, I've already run for dear life straight to the arms of God. I've already run straight to the arms of God. I've run to the Lord like my life depended on it. And I don't know what your story is, but when I reflect on mine, that was absolutely the case. Like if God wouldn't have, if, if, if I wouldn't have heard the voice of God in that moment, who knows what my life would have been like afterwards, right? If you haven't made that decision, if you haven't positioned your life or thought about it in those terms, like it's, it's just that serious, like it's life or death. Like we should be pursuing God like our life depends on it. And the beauty of it is, you know, in many cases it does. And I should be pursuing God like, like there are other people who depend on me being right with him or being in right standing or right position with him. I should be pursuing him like other people's lives depend on him. You know, if you're a family person, if you're a husband, you have a wife, you have children, you know, the, your, your position in Christ and your, your, um, your ability to humble yourself and follow his plan and listen to his instruction, then your, your family is dependent on you being right with God. So the psalmist says, I've already run for dear life straight to the arms of God. And I think that's what real faith does. Like real faith burns the boat. Like I, I've put all, all of, you know, if I was a betting man, I put it all on God. There's no turning back now, right? Um, there's no plan B. I discarded it a long time ago. I've taken my whole life and I've put it in his hands. I'm trusting him with the whole thing. I'm not holding any part back. This is the place that we should be as real, you know, children of God, as, 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 as sheep to him being our shepherd. If we are to really call him Lord, then it means that I've placed my whole life in his hands. I'm not holding anything back. I'm not reserving any part of it, but I put it all to his trust, all to his care. I totally trust and rely on him. I'm depending on him fully. This is what this scripture means. I've already run for dear life straight to the arms of God. <clears throat> I'm not holding anything back. I'm not holding anything to myself. I don't think I can do any part of this better than God can do it. That's the decision. That's the conclusion that we have to make. I don't think there's any wisdom greater than his wisdom. I don't think there's any power greater than his power, any source greater. Nobody can figure this out like God can figure it out. And me, even on my best day, I can't figure it out the way that God has already figured it out. The psalmist continues, he says, so why would I run away now? Why would I run away now? I've already run, I've already run for dear life straight to the arms of God. Why would I run away now when you say run to the mountains just because somebody gives a bad report? Why would I run away now when I've already placed everything that I have in the arms of my father? Why would I run away now? You know, the truth of the matter is I came to this situation already in Christ. Why would I run out of him? I came to this problem in Christ. Why would I try to face it without him? I've already given my life to him. Why would I run? When somebody says, run to the mountains. If I follow the spirit of God to the problem, provision must be here. If I follow the spirit of God to this place, provision must be here. If I follow the Spirit of God to this place, whatever I need must be here. I'm not going to be tempted to leave this place without who I came here with, right? It reminds me of Jesus being led to the wilderness. He was said he was led by the Spirit of God to that wilderness. The Spirit of God led him there. Why would you, why would you abandon who led you, right? If I showed up here in Christ, then I'm going to stay right there in Christ. The scripture continues to say, the evil bows are bent, the wicked arrows aim to shoot under cover of darkness at every heart open to God. The bottoms dropped out of the, con the country. 
It just paints a picture of gloom, right? It paints the picture of one bad situation after another bad situation. It paints the picture of one threat after another threat. The bottoms dropped out of the country. But even in that, I'm grateful that that's not what I was standing on. I wasn't standing on this country. I wasn't leaning on the country for dependence. I was standing on a firm foundation of Christ, right? So even if the bottom drops out, I'm okay. They say, good people don't have a chance. But I beg to differ. God hasn't moved to the mountains. God isn't running. I heard somebody say, you know, one way that he reassures his, his family, he says, listen, if I'm not running, then you don't need to run. You know, if I'm not worried, then you don't need to worry. And this scripture says, God hasn't moved to the mountains. It's like God hasn't ran. God isn't running to the hills. His holy address hasn't changed. God is right where he always has been. He's in charge, as always, his eyes taking everything in, his eyelids unblinking, examining Adam's children inside and out, and not missing a thing. God knows who you are, where you are. God knows your condition. The question is not, is really not whether, whether is not whether or not God knows what's happening. The question really isn't whether God is aware, right? The question really lies on how aware are we of him? How aware are we of his condition? How aware are we? It's it's not like, you know, asking a question, God, do you know know the things that I lack? Do you know the things that I need? The real question is, do we know what he has? Do we know his supply? Do we know his provision? Do we know his fullness? Do we know, do we know our God? Do we know that he is trustworthy? The scripture continues, it says, he tests the good and the bad alike. If anyone cheats, God's outrage. Fail the test and you're out, out in a hell of firestorms. Stones, drinking from a canteen filled with hot desert wind. God's business is putting things right. We know that God is a just God, right? He loves getting the lines straight. He loves setting us straight. He loves setting us straight. Straight. You know, there's a scripture that says that God, um, those, he, those whom he loves, he corrects. Those who God loves, he corrects. And then it says that because we love him, we don't run or hide from his correction because we understand his love, right? We understand that, that our God is a caring God. He's a just God. We understand the things that he's promised to us, the things that he's made available to us. He's not holding anything back from us, you know, I'm not going to fall into that line of thinking that I think that God is holding some good thing back from me. He said that he's not. He's not withholding any good or beneficial thing from me. He's given me everything that I need for life and godliness. He's given everything that we need in order to have success in this life and in the life to come. Once we're standing tall, we can look him straight in the eye is how the scripture concludes. And I just want to encourage you in this time to push back, like push away from the, I mean, you're being, we're being bombarded with information, being bombarded with fear, being bombarded with doubt, right? Being bombarded with opportunities to be anxious. And I want to encourage you to push back How do you push back against that? You push back by staying faithful to your God. The same God that led you this far is the God that's going to keep you. The same God who brought you is the God that's going to carry you through, right? This is a great opportunity for men and women of God. It's a great opportunity for us to see our God deliver. It's a great opportunity for us to know him in ways that probably we haven't, you know? It's a great opportunity for us to, to stand in faith, to show faith and show what faith looks like. And I'm excited, personally, if you haven't noticed. I'm excited, and I want you to be excited, excited and encouraged as well. And some of you, it's an opportunity for you to encourage somebody else, 
right? I mean, you're encouraged. You're encouraged. You're not operating in fear. And maybe you're just, you know, sitting around wondering what it is that you should be doing. And I think this is season for you to encourage someone else. It's for you to carry, carry be a faith carrier, be a faith depositor. Amen. So I want to pray for you. So join me. And Heavenly Father, I just pray, I pray for these, your precious sheep. Father, I thank you for your spirit, the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your, your peace-giving spirit. I thank you, Father, that you speak to us, you lead us, you counsel us. I thank you, Father, that you are an ever-present help. You are our comforter and our counselor. You're with us wherever we are and wherever we go. You are the omnipresent God, the omniscient God. You know the end of this. You've already made plans for it. You've made provisions for it. And Father, I pray for your people that in the season where it may seem that we're being drawn away, I pray that we stand in faith, push in, incline our ears to you, humble ourselves, lean on your wisdom, Seek your face so that we be helped and that we can be a help to those that you send across our paths. Those are the things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you're here or you're sitting and you're listening to this message and, um, you know, in this moment of, of, of honesty, while, you know, you may be home alone or with your family, family, um, Maybe this is, you know, your, your opportunity to just be real with yourself. No eyes are on you. No one's watching you. Um, maybe there are things that God has been wanting you to receive from him and you've declined uh, for whatever reason. Maybe in the, um, you know, the church setting, you, you feared going before a group of people to, to, um, to receive the things that God has for you and makes available an alt at an altar call. Well, now you're home by yourself, right? And there are things that you don't have to consider. So right where you are, you can receive what God has for you. If you haven't made a decision to have Jesus Lord over your life, understand that that doesn't happen. Um, um, <laughs> salvation is not genetic. You don't get saved because your, your mom was saved or your grandmother it's a decision that you have to make on your own. If you haven't made that decision, I invite you to. We serve a good God. God is a good God. God is a caring God. God is very relevant in times like this and out. So I encourage you to make a decision today to receive Jesus as Lord over your life. It's real simple. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Father, I thank you for the love that you have and show. And I decide to follow your voice, to follow your leading. I decide to have Jesus Lord over my life. I give you my life. I surrender to you and I'm grateful. Thank you. Now, I told y'all that word was gonna be on point. That's what we get here at Village Youth Ministries. All right. so. I'm so thankful and prayerful that you receive what you needed right where you are. And now we're going to transition into our giving. Hey, hey, family, it's offering time. The time we get to show our love by sharing of the gifts that God has given us financially. You know, the book of Hebrews says in Hebrews 13, verse 16, that it's, it's good that we should share with others. When we give offering and we share with the ministry, it allows us to reach out into the community and to the world and help others and expand the gospel of Christ. So if you're willing and able to sow a seed, please do so. There's information on the screen that gives you indications of how you can give. And we look forward to it being a blessing to you. Let's pray. God, I thank you for every seed that's being sown right now. And I pray a hundredfold return of every seed that's sown in obedience to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We thank you so much for giving, or in other words, sowing seed here at Revenant Truth Ministries, which we all know is good ground. And speaking of good ground, we have a campaign going called Love Sealed by Action. And with that campaign, we are meeting the needs of our 
family, friends, and those around the community during this crisis. So when you're giving, find that tab as you like scroll down. You can do like offering, you can do like one-time giving, you can give to Embrace and Legacy, or you can also give to the Love Seal by Action campaign, which for many of the needs of people during this corona crisis and other different things going on in the community. So you can give to that and know that you can give at any time. Now, you're not limited just to service times. With online giving, you can give whenever. You can wake up, give. Before you go to sleep, give. You can give again at any time. So family, we love you. We thank you. And before you go, we got a final thought of a confession that we would love to do with you. Hey family, are y'all ready for our fearless confession? Here we go. I am fearless in the face of all things. I am expecting greater because I am connected to the creator. I am appreciative of all God has done and continues to do in my life. I am realigning my plans and prayers with what God's plan is for me. I am letting go of my preferences and clinging to God's promises. I am embracing the uncharted, knowing wherever I go, God is with me. I am seeking God first for the solutions I need. And I am smiling because it's a good day to have a good day. Family, not only are we confessing these things, but we have the great opportunity to wear it loud and proud. So make sure you visit our swag shop online at revealingtruth.org. So remember, again, it's a good day to have a good day.